We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. Manifest. Welcome to the reality tip on earth, Dragon Manifest. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, brother. This is an honor. <laughs> I've been watching you for at least a couple years now. Yes, sir. From the first time I got hip to your channel, I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> I'm I'm always I'm always looking out for new videos. I mean, when I first saw your channel. I said, oh, this is an ancestor that has most definitely returned. Yes, most sir. definitely. This is not a new ancestor. This is an old ancestor. <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could hear, you could feel the ancestors through you. You know, most people probably say, what is he talking about? Right. They don't get it. You got you, you to gotta be on that, on that level. Where the hell you been? I was friends. What friends? Friends like Scatter? What did I tell you about him, boy? You stay around him and you'll wind up in county or in a car. It's because of Scatter that we pay our bills. It's because of him that we can keep this house. If keeping this house means you working for that man, I don't need this damn place. Get your things and get out! Mama, will you just listen, please? You told me you stopped working for Scatter. You lied to me. I'm doing all of this for you. Why don't you get that? Don't give me that. You're all doing it for yourself. Mama, please, stop.
strung out in perfect harmony, Terry Ellis becomes the first of the divas to offer the world her singular sound. And she does just that on Southern Gap. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. Emergency. Want to show about it? Like to hear it? Here you go. Free your mind. I keep it real. What do? Because I keep it real like this. talking about not falling into the teacher trap not falling into the website trap so today what teachers can you learn from we just told you that the Aka Wu tells you that we're all the great teacher at the same time so who are you gonna learn from you're gonna learn from brothers like Sarnetta you're gonna learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta you're gonna learn the positives and negatives of people like brother polite the positives and negatives of people like Sarah Sutton Seti. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netter Cat. You're going to learn. you definitely going to learn from King Noble. you definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku.
are in a state of emergency. Congratulations. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been imprisoned. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been imprisoned, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying. You, yes, sir. We have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple, and we have to recover. Yes. All the things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating mm -hmm. you, and you mm -hmm. break them, and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Temple in the building. Well, just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is a... Uh... <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Justin.
Gomane. Assemble the people, Gomane. We will not be defeated by witch doctor's illusions. <laughs> Rocky three. Put two on my face. <laughs> there we go. I don't have a lot to say. Come to see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, and Rona. I trust that feeling. Does anybody have any questions of me before I get out of here? Let's see what you guys are saying. What's up, Soul Sister Rona? Hey, Talik. I'm the brother. That did my uh, Mike Jackson in Tunica, Mississippi. Hey, now, uh, hello to Terry. Respect, bless up, bless up, bless up. Come to see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, and Rona. It's Terry. It's important for the black youth, especially, to know that that we did have a history and that we did great things and that we had great people and those things were not in the history books when I was in school. And um, what I'd like to be doing five years from now is attempting to rewrite the history books so that they'll know that. Okay, thank you for donating to uh, my uncle Tali. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know that my family appreciate it because he's been on our lives for years now. So, yeah, and I just want to say thank you because, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, and we love you guys. Bye. Bye. He's forever and always. He's forever and always. He's forever and always. Hi, uh, my name is Deborah Kennedy. I live in Texas and I listened to uh, Talik's video regarding failure of prayer and God's uh, so-called promises, things. I was just delighted. I thought it was just a, a very insightful, and I commend you all for putting something out there like that, that uh, we just we lean too much on uh, what we're told somebody else is looking out for us, um, and we have philosophies or teachings or like that, and uh, we're supposed to be developing that in ourselves, and I appreciate Talik's, uh his uh, powerful delivery. You don't uh, need to call if you're busy, but um, I just want to pass that along. I'm very impressed. Thank you so much. You take care now. Peace and love. Hey, Uma! <laughs> Not to be popular. It's just I'm inspired by my brother 
that reality tip was brother the most powerful voice on the internet that real angel snub it up seven that's right brother. i'm calling you out brother i'm calling i'm building you i'm putting you out there brother i'm shouting you out that's that's what that's my inspiration we want to make sure that we're not just working to be first, but we're working to be right. A lot of times there are situations when things are just happening so fast. It's always important to be fast, but we always want to be right. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work, and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. by brother Angel Snubnop7 at the Reality Temple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snubnop7's videos, I think that um, he comes from a different angle, and there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from, and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well. And I have nothing against that because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand, cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. What dear? Cause I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real. studio and thinking about 
what I wanted to record. At the time that that was happening, which was four years ago, uh, I think the first incident of police brutality was Eric Garner. It was just, it was so yeah. devastating and, and traumatic. I just wanted to give a voice to what I and so many of my friends and, and family were feeling. And to see these things happen and, and to not get justice for it, it's just, it's insane. It's insane. And it's heartbreaking. Nowadays I can't believe what's going on in front of me. Meditate and I pray a lot and I also write in my gratitude journal. That's what it takes for me um, to rise above the reality that I'm in and that the way things appear to be. And it gives me the strength to be able to, to see it from another perspective in order to try and deal with it. And you have been successful for over, what, 30 years? You just celebrated an anniversary with En Vogue, uh, releasing your first album. Did it get better? Well, you know, <clears throat> we wrote a song uh, 30 an anthem. Unfortunately for the, for this very thing, what we're still going through, systematic racism. And um, that song was written from four girls, four black women. Each girl wrote her own verse about her own personal perspective in dealing with racism and, and having that experience. And the message was for all of us, everyone, to free our minds and and let's sit down and talk and, and reconstruct things so that justice and equality works for everyone, all of yeah. us.
Come on, Cleveland. Come on. Come on over here. Come on in there anyway, short walk. Come on over. Then, then uh, you're going to limp back. You walk over, but you're limping back. To ring out in perfect harmony, Terry Ellis becomes the first of the divas to offer the world her singular sound. And she does just that on Southern Gap. It's important for the black youth especially to know that that we did have a history and that we did great things and that we had great people and those things were not in the history books when I was in school and um, what I'd like to be doing five years from now is attempting to rewrite the history books so that they'll know that. One, two, three. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am your soul brother number one, Angel Snow number seven. This will probably be my shortest Google Hangout ever, but I'm very busy. And what am I so busy? Well, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Now, y'all know I got a little crush on my soul sister, Terry Ellis of Invogue. So my first step is to try to meet her. And I'm going to do that. Look what I got. Can y'all see that? Invogue. Invogue ticket. 
Going to see my sister's in Vogue. Where's, let me see if I can get a close-up right here. Let me, let me see. Ah, let me see if I can get a close-up here. Ah, da, 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 da. Where's this going to be at? This, this sort of sucks. But anyway, I got my ticket. Going to see Terry. Yes. Going to see Terry. And the least I can do is get a... Maybe I can get a five-minute interview or something. I, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm sort of nervous and I'm trembling, <laughs> but I gotta get this job done. And uh I might be able to put out a few short videos before I hit the road. And uh man, I'm I'm excited, but I'm nervous. But you can't in this business, you can't be nervous, you just gotta. You got to go for it. You can't be scared. You got to go for it. You don't know what might happen until you do something. Understand? How do you know what's going to happen until you try it? You don't, you don't know. So with that said, got my ticket, ready to roll. Well, almost ready to roll. Getting myself together. My birthday present to myself. And hopefully... I'm charismatic enough where I can uh, get my soul sisters involved on the soul train. I'm not talking about the soul train on TV. I'm talking about this soul train. And with that said, y'all, I am Audi 5000. Love, peace, and soul, as Don Cornelius always say. Just wanted to let y'all know what's going on this weekend. That's why I will be absent. And that's why I wasn't going to be able to do a video lecture for Sunday. And uh, I'm working with uh, some brothers and we're trying to begin a new blog talk radio program. And uh, we wanna try to bring something a little different. And also at the same time, hopefully we can come together with like minds and act appropriately and be effective and be an example of what we should be doing because clearly we're not doing the appropriate thing. But in the meantime, I'm going to see involved. I'm going to see my Terry Ellis. Till next time, y'all, peace out. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am Angel Snub Number Seven, and uh, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. 
Y'all can listen. You don't have to listen. I put my business out on the street. Maybe I should never have said nothing. But since I did, I guess I might as well continue to share my journey, my mission. And what is that journey? What is that mission? I would like to meet my soul sister, Terry Ellis of Invo. Many of you probably know I've talked about it on many occasions. But let's let's get real. <clears throat> Let me start by saying this. Okay. I think I was in my 20s and I met a real pretty soul sister. We were about the same age, I believe. And uh, I met her at the unemployment office. We both were looking for jobs at the time. And I, for some reason, she started talking to me. And I'm not going to be disrespectful or nothing like that because uh, I'm really not a... Some of you may believe this. I'm not really a social person. I'm sort of a loner. I keep to myself. I really don't, you know, go out speaking and socialize with, with nobody, male or female. I like being by myself. I, that's the way I've been all my life, really. But for some reason, she decided to strike up a conversation with me and we started talking and like I said, we both were looking for jobs at the unemployment office. Next thing I know, she had gave me her, her, her address. She told me she didn't have a telephone, so I couldn't call her. And uh, next thing you know, we parted company. And uh, I decided to go see her. Now, I did tell you I was, <laughs> I was unemployed. So uh, I didn't have a raggedy car. I didn't, I didn't even have bus fare. And uh, I really didn't even know where she lived because I was new to the area. But, you know, uh, when when hormones kick in and, you, and guys know, you know, when your hormones start kicking in and you think something might happen or whatever, you know, hormones get to kicking in, bruh, find out where the address is, and bruh, got to walk in. See, when you like somebody or you want something, <laughs> guys do things and you walk. You don't have a car, can't get on the bus, then you do what nature gave you and that's walking. So I I walk some miles and walk, walk, walk. And you walk and uh, unfortunate for me and my hormones, I did. She gave me her real address, but uh, I, for some reason, she, her family wasn't there. I asked the neighbors, did they know her? And they said, yes, the, the family had just moved or whatever. I'm like, wow. So I didn't have her. I did not have a telephone number for her to call. Yeah, actually, I didn't. I don't think I had a telephone either. I don't believe. So I didn't have a. I know she didn't have a telephone. So, you know, it was, you know. The hormones was out of luck, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. And uh, I've known guys, uh, I know a brother that took five or six buses. You know, when the hormones kick in, you just, hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know, he took five buses to get where he needed to go. I wish you luck. <laughs> but this is just to go to show, you know, when you like somebody or the hormones kick in, whatever, you do. Guys would do, I don't know about sisters, Some sister, I've seen some sisters do some stuff too now. You know, they like somebody, they willing to walk a little bit themselves. But I know when the hormones kick in with, with bros, hey man, you walk, you do, take buses, whatever, you hitchhike. I've, I've hitchhiked. So, hey, you know, you do what you got to do in order to see this person. Now, I want to clarify something. Cause, because this is the reality's temple on earth. Now, I say words like, I have a crush on Terry and whatever. Let me clarify this. Let me make this perfectly clear. I do not love this woman. I am not obsessed with this woman at all. She's interesting to me because I've studied her. I like the way she carries herself and things of this nature. She's interesting. However, the reality is, first of all, 
She's not even in my world. We're not even in the, it's not even the same status. You know what I'm saying? So, see, there's, there's a problem here. But not even so about the status or even in the world, there's a mentality that's missing here. She's a soul sister, like many sisters around, but there's a mentality that I have to overcome. And I know about me. So, see, um, she's not black conscious. She's not a, she's not in our world. Those of us who speak about soul issues, about soul people, she's not in, she's, she cannot, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think that she, I think that she wants to be in our world, but she's an entertainer. She's caught up in the world entertainment. And when you are an entertainer, there's a line you don't cross. Otherwise you don't eat because the people will view you a certain way. And she makes her living singing. Like many of you, you are faceless on YouTube. And many of you, don't want to show your face because your boss at your job might see you or your next door neighbor. You want to keep yourself secret. You a secret revolutionary. Me, I don't give a damn. I could care less. But she's in that world. Same thing for Michael Jackson. Same thing for Eddie Murphy, Oprah. Anybody in the world of entertainment, you can only speak a certain way. Otherwise, they will threaten your livelihood. You know who they are. And I know by listening to her talk and she begins to speak about black this or that, there's more she would like to expound, but she can't. And I understand that. But along with that, your brother, as y'all know, uh, I'm anti, anti-God, anti-religion, spirituality. I reject black. I reject African. So see, there's a whole lot of stuff here. I don't know how she would be able to handle that in me. So going back to when the hormones kick in, this is a very interesting sister. I would not mind meeting her and talking to her in, in person. So I decided, and I did look up the uh, Tom Joyner Fantasy Voyage Cruise. And uh, my intent was to go. However, Mr. Joyner and Associates and the cruise line, they decided to come up with these prices that's ridiculous. And for me, just for a single person on this boat, now she would be on this boat for seven days. She would be there seven days. Perfect opportunity. I would have I would have seven days to meet this sister. But it would cost me. This is this is okay. I told you about the about the hormones and people do stuff. But uh believe me, seven thousand three hundred. That's just for getting on the boat. Also, airfare, which is probably gonna be almost another thousand. You're talking about cab fare, passport. You're talking almost real close to $10,000. Now, really, now, is she worth $10,000? She's, she has no value. But the problem here is, oh, $7,300, come on. I mean, really, is it worth my investing in this? Ah. There's a lot of things bruh do. Uh, there's a lot of things hormones would do, but when hormones can go and get a job and make some money, then I will go with the hormones. But $7,300, it's got to be a better way. $7,300, I could, I could probably pay in vogue to come to town real close. Get me some other people, a few people, and we can bring them to town for that kind of money. And I know for a fact, and I know for sure, we're going to meet. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about that. Probably better on the cruise. There's nobody on the cruise that I want to see. 
all these has been uh old fashioned so uh stars or whatever. I don't want I, old old school rappers. I don't the only one I want to see is her and Invo. Actually just her. Just her. I don't want so not only about it's not only about the uh the money. It's my time. I'm not interested on what's happening on this boat. Nothing at all. I could take advantage and I could go on the boat and report to you guys. Oh, I'm here at the toy. Tom Joyner, uh, Carnival Cruise, Fantastic Voyage. And here's, I might get an interview with some of the celebrities that y'all might like. Whatever. That's not what I'm there for. I'm there to do something here. And you have to look at your investment. And to me, it's, I, I, it's too many factors here that's not going well to invest $7,300. That's not like walking a few miles. That's not like catching a bus across the, the, the town. This is a, There are people who don't make $7,300 in a whole year. I'm going to say that again. There's people who don't make, who don't earn $7,300 in a whole year. And I would be really pissed off to pay almost ten thousand dollars to see this sister on this boat, and I and I'm I, and I already know she don't have the I don't know she, what kind of mentality she has just to meet her, and she might be impressed. I said, "Well, sister, you know I spent a lot of money to come meet you," and she'll smile. Of course, she's an entertainer. She she'll smile, ha 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 ha, pat me on the head. That was that's nice, and and might give me an autograph. $10,000 for a pat on the head and an autograph. Bruh, can't do it. It's got to be a better way. And for me, really, I can take it or leave it alone. Because I am not obsessed with this woman. I don't love this woman. She's just interesting to me. There are those of you who might think or believe or assume something else. You have assumed wrong. It ain't that serious. It's not that serious at all. She's just somebody that I find interesting. There might be some of you sisters out there who might find me interesting. <laughs> might, hey, it's possible. But uh, I'm not going, it's not going to cost you $7,300. My telephone number is public. Anybody can call me anytime. I, I will return your call. You will talk to me. And I will promise, no matter how big I could ever get, people will have access and can talk to me. So uh, I don't. I just don't. I just, you know, if 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 I thought that she was in any kind of way in our world, this world that I call, you know, that y'all call black conscious, pro African, pro black, whatever. You know, she might be worth the the uh, investment, but no, I, I just I just can't I, I I can't do it. I can't. I, I want to, and it's not even about the money. It's about the investment. I'm not going to spend seven thousand, ten thousand dollars for a pat on the head and an autograph. And she might give me a five minute interview. I, I can get that later on sometime. It's not going to cost me $10,000. I just can't. And anyway, I just want to get that off my chest. And I just want to clarify my position on this sister because uh, it's a brother that I talked to. He he told me to go for the gusto. And I'm like, no, brother, I can't do that. I had to, he thought that I was obsessed or really loved the woman. No, 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 no. This is the reality tip on earth. Come on, y'all. Y'all think I'm really going to go there? Matter of fact, after after today's video, you might not hear me talk. I, yes, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna tell that lie. I'm not gonna tell that lie. I like the sister. She's she's sweet. I, she's cool. But with that said, thank y'all for listening. Jot down your comments and uh, tell me. Give me your thoughts. I might spend the money. Who knows? Till next time, y'all. Angel Snuffed Up Seven. Peace out. Come on, Cleveland. Come on. Come on over here.
Come on in and let y'all walk. Come on over. Then, then uh, you're going to limp back. You walk over, but you're limping back. Ellis becomes the first of the divas to offer the world her singular sound. And she does just that on Southern Gap. And we're happy to be here in Atlantic City. Yes. She's Cindy. I'm Terry. That's Rona. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we have a new record, our forthcoming record. Um, the title is uh, Electric Cafe. Uh, the first single is Deja Vu, uh, which can be streamed on iTunes and Spotify, Pandora. Pandora. Yeah. And you can get it at Amazon Music, blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs>
All right. We are in the house now. There you go. Enroll. Zos Casino. The brothers in the house. That's Prince. There we go. I don't have a lot to say. Come to see Terry. That's Terry. Cindy. Jerome. It's Terry. There we go. Let's take a walk down here to. There we go. All right. Waiting on the room, trying to get together, get this thing together. Terry came up to the stage and she wants to start. I, I forgot what song. Uh, I forgot what song that they were they were singing, but uh she wanted to start the soul train line. And uh she asked the audience, don't leave me hanging. And the music got to got to going, and the people. <laughs> The people was leaving her hanging, right? But one of my relatives, of whom I thought wasn't, you know, sort of introverted and shy, they stood up and was the first one to kick off the soul train line, right? And that's when everybody got to, to grooving. And then her, then her friend, actually my people, the people that I brought, we kicked it off, got up and got everybody to move it. And uh, like I told you, I was tired. I was tired as a mug. I'm telling you. I was tired as a mug, and uh, I'm just playing with this uh, thing here. I'm trying to, yeah, okay. Let me get back where I was at. Yeah, so I can see my chat room here. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I was tired, man. And, uh, but it was so much excitement going on. And see, now I'm there to see Terry. I need to, I need to do something to get her attention. I need to do something so that she would notice me more than just the little thing that we had already going already. So uh, many of you know that, that many of you know, and some of you don't know, but I'm gonna tell you, I used to, I used to impersonate Michael Jackson all the way back to the 1980s. I have not did Michael Jackson since at least 2004. So 2004, I probably was still in my 30s. I'm 54 years old now. Michael Jackson takes a lot of energy, especially the way that I do it. So they dancing, and I'm like, Michael Jackson has not failed me yet. When I was a Muslim, wearing that bow tie in the streets of Manhattan, I used to have my final call newspapers and did my little Michael Jackson move, and Caucasian people, would buy my newspaper. Some of the brothers say, hey man, you selling our newspaper to white folks? What difference it make? Don't you, don't you buy the New York Post? Don't you buy the New York Times? Why not sell them our newspaper? That's not who we, who cares? The dollar is green. I'm selling my papers. That's what we out here for, to sell these newspapers. I did my little Michael Jackson thing, <laughs> you know, and, uh, Caucasian people will pass by. Oh, you doing Michael Jackson? Give me a dollar for my paper. It's all good. You want you want to talk about? Uh, you didn't want me to sell my papers to white folks or whatever. You have your papers in your hand. I don't have my papers. I'm selling other brothers' papers. Just do my little Michael Jackson thing. That draws the attention. What is that you selling? I'll give you a dollar for it. That's what. That's why we was out there, idiot. <laughs> Stupid. So, so I began to do my little Michael Jackson move. And that, that hyped the crowd even more. People like, do it, do it, Michael Jackson. Do it, Michael Jackson. People start calling me Michael Jackson. And Cindy's relatives was right next to me. They didn't have no, you know, you don't know what nobody can do. So I get up and do my Michael Jackson. And believe me, oh, believe, oh, I'm telling you, I'm 54 years old. And I'm out of shape. It's difficult to do Michael Jackson and you're out of shape. 
when I was in my 30s, my 20s and 30s, no problem. And also, I'm 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 heavier than I was back in the day. I was 140, 160 pounds. Now I'm now I'm 200. <laughs> you know, you can, you know, I, but I have to, but I still can, I still think I can pull it off. And I did. The crowd was like, Michael Jackson. The reality was I was actually dancing with Involve. They was concentrating on Involve and, and concentrating on Michael Jackson. Now this the this the embarrassing part now, y'all. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I did I did a Michael Jackson spin and it didn't go right and I hit the floor. <laughs> I hit the floor. Out of all the years I've done Michael Jackson, I've never spun and, and fell on the ground. But this time I did, but it was cool because it still make make you memorable. And uh, somebody told me that the security guard wanted to come and, and get me, you know, make me sit down. But when I fell down, the security guard started laughing and he just left me alone, let me go ahead and have a little fun. So actually it's, it's saved me. <laughs> uh, Brother Lee out in the house, Ed Older. Thank y'all for being here with me, man. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I enjoyed myself. But believe me, you're 50 some years old. And after you dance like Michael Jackson, believe me, once you settle down, it ain't the same no more. Brother hurting right now to the right now as I speak to you, I, I'm hurting a little bit. Very sore. Uh I, I would, you know, I have to, I'm just out of shape. I'm just out of shape. But uh it, it would only take me a little bit to exercise and get back into shape real quick. Because I'm 54 years old and I and I know I'm out of shape. But I'm probably in better shape than a lot of youngsters that I've seen. <laughs> wow, you know. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it was really, really cool. Now, this is the part that that that's that's really cool, really cool. Okay, so now people know me. I'm Michael Jackson, Cindy's relative. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me go back to my screen. Uh, so y'all know who Terry is. Let me find. Let me show you who Terry is. Screen share. Cause some of you may not even know who Terry is. That's Terry. That's Terry Ellis of Enro. That's who I wanted to see. That's who I wanted to see. Yeah, Terry. Excuse me, I gotta stare at the picture for a little bit here. <laughs> Woo, Terry Ellis, yes. I finally got to meet Terry. Y'all didn't think I was gonna be able to pull it off. You know what I like about the whole thing? So far, so far, there is no haters. I haven't received no hate. Nobody has said or wrote on my page, nothing. No haters, no jealousy, no, none, nothing like that. So I'm proud of, you know, I, I, you know People actually are rooting for me. I hope you, man, I hope you do good, man. I hope you, man, I hope you can pull that off. <laughs> you know? Thank you for the encouragement. And uh, like I said, no haters, no haters at all. But that's my Terry right there. Love you, sister, sister Terry. Let me get off this here. Let me, let me bring myself back. Let me get back here, get back on this page here. Okay, I'm, I should be back again. Yeah, so that's Terry. Where's that other page? Okay, now, now, this whole thing is new to me, so excuse me there. Yeah, so, uh, oh, got, a, uh, got another person in this chat room. I cannot pronounce that your, your, uh, your name, L. Miss City, something like that. Thank you for joining me because actually I did not expect nobody to be here. I was going to be by myself. So thank those who are in the chat room. Thank those who are just listening uh, for joining me because, uh, or maybe some of you just being nosy. I wonder what that nigga called himself done done. <laughs> anyway, that's my, my sister, Terry Ellis. That's the one, that's the sister that I came to actually see. Again, love you, Rona. 
love you, Cindy, but I came to see my Terry. And uh, I'm in heaven, y'all, because now they're getting ready. They're breaking the, they're breaking the songs down. And she, Terry getting ready to sing some type of slow song. I don't even know what the song is. So like I said, I'm right in front of Terry. And I, I've been vibing with her a little bit. And the other two sisters, they know that I'm trying to get Terry's attention, right? So uh, Terry comes close to the stage. I don't, she was singing. I don't know what the song she was. But anyway, I guess she, she was giving the motion like she wanted to hold somebody's hand. And you know something, the, the tacky thing about this is I actually was allowing some other cat to run up there and grab her hand because I was procrastinating. You don't procrastinate. When you want something like that, you don't procrastinate. You could, you could lose it all. I actually procrastinate and could have gave another cat a, a chance to grab her hand. I had to think about it. But again, I told you, I was sleepy, half sleepy. I was fatigued and, what, and, and was not thinking properly. <laughs> I wasn't. But I acted quickly enough, jumped up there and grabbed Sister Terry's hand. And she got to sing. And I was like, wow. So I'm right there. I got her hand in my hand. And you know, Sister Terry, she got a nice little grip. She, she got a nice little grip, you know, hand grip. I had to tighten up a little bit. Because if I didn't, she might think I'm a little sissy. You know, I didn't have no strength. <laughs> maybe because, uh, uh, maybe because she's been holding that microphone for years and years and years, you know, just from doing that. That's probably why she got a nice little grip on her hands. And uh, she was singing. I'm just like, wow. You know, just right there. We we right here, right here. And uh, then I grabbed her hand. I brought her in to me. And I kissed her hand, right? And I said, I said, love you, Terry. And uh, that was a really nice moment, man. That was a real nice moment. I I I, I like that. That was really cool. I started to just snatch her off the stage and just, you know, <laughs> that's what I started to do. I, said, nah, I know security want to want to throw me out there, and uh, that was really nice. So, uh, and I do have pictures of that, bad pictures. But a matter of fact, let's go to that. Let me, cause I'm talking about it. Let me share that screen again. Let's go back to sharing the screen. Go back to sharing the screen. Let's. I'm gonna see some of these pictures here real quick. Uh, I have to apologize. Like I said, I can't interact with Terry and take pictures. But every, I mean, folks was my people was we was they were enjoying themselves. Nobody was interested really in videotaping and taking pictures because we were really active in the concert. So let me go back to my screen share here, and let me get the let me go to my Facebook. Uh oh, there we go. Y'all see that? This bald head guy to the right, that's me. And see that sister right there on the stage? I'm watching my mind. Oh, now my mind, my, my other, uh, my mind's caught up with caught up with me now. So I can see the same thing that y'all should be seeing. The bald head guy right there, that's me. The suit I'm wearing is the suit I'm wearing right now. And that's Terry Ellis. That's Terry. And uh, I think I was backing away on this picture here. But let's, uh, we're going to move. See, now if you look right here now, in one hand, that's the envelope I want to give her. Got my DVD and my DVD and the inf contact information. And you can see my hand is in her hand right there. She was singing to me. I think we was getting ready to, to uh, she was getting ready to go back on the stage. And I was going backwards on this picture. But uh, I met Terry. We was right there. No, the picture, don't lie. She's right there. She knows who I am because everybody said, that's Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. You know, I don't even know because they was dancing. I don't even know if they saw what I fell. I don't know. But they do know Michael Jackson was out there in front of them. People said, that's Michael Jackson. Another bad picture. But uh, I, oh, that's when I kissed her hand. That's when I kissed Terry's hair right there. You can't see, but that's when I kissed her hand. Yeah. Don't hate, appreciate. <laughs> Ain't that what they say? 
<laughs> Don't hate, appreciate. Man, oh, oh, oh man, I'm telling you. You know, I can take it or leave it, but I, I would rather take it. Sister, I mean, why I'm right there with Terry. Now, I might get in trouble for a comment, which I'm gonna make in a second. I might get in trouble, but I, you know, you know, this is the reality of this temple. I have to talk the way I need to talk, you know, regardless of the consequence. I just have to, I have to talk. Let me go, let me go to the next picture here. See, we was right there on the stage. Actually, I'm closer. I'm closer. That's somebody else's picture. Cause I'm not in the back. I'm on the front. I'm on the front row, right there with them. I don't know whose picture that is. I think I think it was one of their relatives sent me sent me that picture. They took that picture from because they had they they had some other relatives that was in the back. See, we was more the bald head guy. That 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 should be me right there. On your on your right side. That's me. That's the front. We on the very front row, and they're not really that far away. Thank <laughs> you. 